This video is intended to provide the basic knowledge required to properly install and maintain Dodge's new hydraulically assisted ISAF bearings. This new technology extends the cutting edge imperial mounting system to include larger bore USAF and SAF bearings. For specific procedures, always refer to the Dodge Hydraulic ISAF Instruction Manual. As you know, SAF bearings are extremely difficult to mount and dismount properly. Due to the many parts, installation and assembly is cumbersome and time-consuming, often resulting in improper bearing clearance and reduced bearing life. In 1996, Dodge introduced its Imperial Mounting concept, which has revolutionized the bearing mounting and dismounting process. In 1999, the Imperial concept was extended to smaller bore USAF bearings and now, with its new patent pending technology, extends the Imperial line to include bores from 8 inches to 15 inches. The pillow blocks and or inner units are shaft ready as they're shipped completely assembled and greased. More importantly, issues of bearing clearance are eliminated, ensuring longer bearing life and more efficient operations. We are mounting an 8-inch hydraulic ISAF pillow block bearing for this demonstration. The tools needed for this process include a scribe or marking pen, micrometer, rubber mallet, spanner wrench or drift and hammer, barring rod, hydraulic pump, magnetic base indicator, pry bar, file, grease gun, torque wrench, appropriately sized box or opened end wrench, and M6 hex key for G1/4-19 pipe plug. Begin by inspecting the shaft and remove any burrs or rough areas using a file or emery cloth. Then measure the shaft to ensure it's within commercial shaft tolerances. On all large bore hydraulic mount dismount ISAFs, commercial shaft tolerance is plus zero minus six thousandths of an inch. Apply a light coating of machine oil or rust inhibitor to the shaft before mounting the bearing. If the inner unit is still within the pillow block housing, remove the top of the housing and lift out the inner unit. Now, remove the lubricatable auxiliary seals or auxiliary seal and end cover from the outside diameter of the mount and dismount nuts. Be careful not to damage the O-rings in the seal bore. Note the orientation of the seals in the housing before removing. Please notice the difference between the dismount nut and the mount nut. The dismount nut has three sets of drilled and tapped holes around its perimeter while the mount nut has seven sets of holes, as well as a mount nut instruction plate. Remove the lock clips located on the faces of the mount and dismount nuts and save them for later replacement. Next, scribe a line on the adapter and on the face of the dismount nut. Rotate the dismount nut counterclockwise two full rotations. The dismount nut should be loose during the mounting of the bearing, but must not be removed. Now, Scribe a line on the adapter and on the face of the mount nut. Rotate the mount nut counterclockwise one full turn. Tap on the face of the nut with the rubber mallet. 
This will drive the adapter toward the dismount end and allow the adapter to fully expand. Slide the inboard lubricatable auxiliary seal onto the shaft in the same orientation as when it was removed from the pillow block. The ISAF inner unit must be placed onto the shaft and properly positioned. When mounting both fixed and floating bearings on the same shaft, mount the fixed bearing first, which is normally mounted on the drive end of the shaft. Use the end of the shaft to locate the position of the fixed bearing. The fixed bearing can then be used to locate the position of the floating bearing. Should the inner unit not slide onto the shaft, loosen the mount nut counterclockwise, one full rotation, and tap the face of it in order to drive the adapter toward the dismount end until the inner unit does slide onto the shaft. Once the inner unit is properly positioned on the shaft, use a spanner or barring rod to rotate the mount nut clockwise until the fit is snug. Be careful to ensure the inner unit does not move out of position on the shaft during this procedure. There are two G1 quarter 19 BSPP hydraulic ports in the mount nut. One port is located on the face of the nut. The other is on its OD 180 degrees away. Remove the pipe plug from either of the two ports and attach the hydraulic pump. Referring to Table 1, find the proper starting position pressure and apply that amount of hydraulic pressure. In the case of the 8-inch ISAF, we're applying 254 PSI. Once the starting position is reached, place the magnetic base dial indicator on the shaft and position the anvil so it's against the face of the inner unit. Since the inner unit will be moving away from the anvil, be sure it is compressed enough to allow the final position distance to be achieved. Refer again to Table 1 to determine the final position of the inner unit. For our 8-inch ISAF demonstration, the final position is 49 thousandths of an inch from the starting position. Increase pump pressure until the indicator shows the appropriate movement. In the event pump pressure reaches 3500 PSI and the final position has not been reached, abort the procedure by releasing the pressure on the hydraulic nut. Then check to ensure the dismount nut is still loose. If it is not, rotate the nut one turn counterclockwise and repeat the pumping procedure. Do not reset the dial indicator and continue to the final position. Release the pressure on the pump by opening the release valve. Remove the magnetic base dial indicator. Using a barring rod, rotate the mount nut clockwise until it's once again snug. This will allow the hydraulic fluid to return to the pump. Remove the pump from the nut and reinstall the pipe plug. If the hydraulic port on the nut OD was used, make sure the pipe plug is below the face of the nut. This will prevent damaging the lubricatable auxiliary seals when they're installed later. The mount nut has seven sets of holes and the adapter has four slots. Find the combination that requires the least rotation. Be very careful to always rotate the nut clockwise in this step. Do not loosen the nut once the final position is attained. Now, using a spanner or drift and hammer, Rotate the mount nut clockwise until a lock clip can be inserted into one of the adapter slots and aligned with the drilled and tapped lock clip holes. Insert the lock clip and tighten the lock clip bolts. The drift or spanner will likely damage the holes on the OD of the mount nut. So file off all burrs from the OD of the nut to prevent damage to the seals during installation. Finally, from the dismount side of the bearing, rotate the dismount nut using a barring rod until it is snug. If the holes are not aligned, rotate the dismount nut counterclockwise, in this case loosen the nut, until the first set of holes align with the adapter slot. Install the remaining lock clip into an adapter slot 
which lines up with the drilled and tapped lock clip holes. Tighten the lock clip bolts. As the bearing is pre-lubricated at the factory, no further lubrication is needed and installation of the fixed non-expansion inner unit is complete. For a fixed non-expansion bearing, include the stabilizing ring over the mount nut. It can be placed on either side of the bearing, but the standard is on the mount nut side. Installation procedures for the expansion bearing are the same as for the non-expansion bearing, except do not install the stabilizing ring. Install lubricatable auxiliary seals onto the OD of the mount and dismount nuts. After the housings are positioned, drop the bearings into the housings, making sure to align the seals with the seal grooves in the pillow block housing. Place the housing caps over the bearings. Then tighten the cap bolts according to the torque values specified in Table 2 of the instruction manual. Grease seals through fittings located above them. If an end cover is preferred on one side, a seal is not required on that side. Place the end cover into the pre-existing seal grooves in the housing. It is not necessary to grease the end cover. Dismounting the hydraulic ISAF is just as quick and easy as mounting. After removing the inner unit from the housing, remove the lubricatable auxiliary seals and locking tabs from the mount and dismount nuts. Scribe a line on the adapter and mount nut faces. Using the line as a reference, rotate the mount nut two full turns counterclockwise using a spanner or drift and hammer. It is important that the mount nut remain loose during the dismounting procedure. Using a spanner or barring rod, rotate the dismount nut clockwise until snug. Remove the pipe plug from either of the two hydraulic G1/4-19 BSPP ports on the dismount nut. Then attach the hydraulic pump. Actuate the hydraulic pump until the initial pressure rises sufficiently to break the adapter away from the inner race of the bearing and the pressure decreases to zero. This may require repeated pump actuations. Once the pressure reaches zero, the bearing is fully dismounted. Should the hydraulic pressure ever reach 5000 psi, abort the procedure. Release pressure to the hydraulic nut by opening the release valve on the pump. Check to ensure the mount nut is still loose. If not, rotate one turn counterclockwise and repeat the previous step. Release the pressure on the pump by opening the release valve and rotate the dismount nut clockwise until snug. This allows the hydraulic fluid to return to the pump. Next, remove the pump from the nut and reinstall the pipe plug ensuring it's below the OD of the nut. This will prevent damage to the lubricatable auxiliary seals. Now the bearing should easily slide off the shaft. In all cases, the hydraulic ISAF will replace existing open-end SAF dimensioned bearings. Since the mounting dimensions are the same, merely replace the existing pillow block housing assemblies with the new ones. If you're trying to replace a closed-end SAF, contact Dodge Engineering. Now you too can properly use and enjoy the many benefits of the hydraulic ISAF. As the latest advancement in mounted bearing technology from Dodge, you'll appreciate the new speed and accuracy with which you can accomplish mounting and dismounting tasks. It's a fraction of the time required for conventional SAF bearings. That translates into reduced machine downtime, which improves productivity. The hydraulic ISAF also eliminates installation contamination and assures you of proper bearing clearance every time. The hydraulic ISAF, it's another great idea from Dodge and Baldor. After all, our job is making yours easier.